Since the theme of this workshop is reclaiming learning and the focus is on educational innovation, use of mobiles and handhelds and what this means for new age educators, permit me to share my story of how I reinvented myself from running an e-learning company to becoming an independent educator. I've been in the e-learning industry for almost two decades. In 2001, I co-founded Enabling Dimensions, a company providing bespoke e-learning and knowledge management solutions based out of Singapore. We work with prestigious clients like Worldwide Fund for Nature, World Health Organization, Nokia, UEFA, Michigan Virtual University, and others. Our learning solutions include game-based learning, role-playing scenarios, simulations, videos, and animation. We also developed mobile learning solutions and learning games for the visually disabled. Over the years, as the web went from 1.0 to 2.0, we started moving from iLearn solutions to vLearn or collaborative learning solutions. We created online learning communities and knowledge sharing platforms. A decade into this, it occurred to me that all the solutions we were developing focused on vertical skills, be they marketing, finance, science, or mathematics. Whereas for servicing our clients, the skills we most looked for in people we engaged were more horizontal skills. We wanted people who could learn on their own on the job, beyond whatever formal qualification they had acquired, people who could think creatively, who were problem solvers, emotionally mature, and were seeking a work-life balance. It occurred to me that if, as a boutique company, we were looking for these horizontal skills over and above the vertical domain-specific skills, then surely large-scale employees were seeking these skills even more. So, as a side project, I started researching what these horizontal skills could be. I found a UNESCO report titled Learning the Treasure Within, which listed four pillars of education essential for the new century. A list of life skills essential for success in the 21st century created by P21, a US-based organization that is a partnership between education, business and government leaders was another good resource I found. And I also noticed that progressive educational institutions were making changes to their curriculum to include skills like learning to learn. I figured that what I was calling horizontal skills were being described as 21st century life skills. Encouraged that I was probably right that for success and well-being today, vertical skills are still necessary, but they are no longer sufficient. I started working on developing a framework of skills that I called timeless life skills. I would research what would qualify as a timeless life skill, look at the nuances of each such skill and put my research as easy to understand presentations on platforms like SlideShare and Script under Creative Commons license. I was pleasantly surprised that over a couple of years, my presentations had been viewed or downloaded over 200,000 times. This was a good indication that many people were interested in 21st century life skills. Emboldened, I ventured to create framework comprising of six key timeless life skills. Learning to learn or self-directed learning. Learning to think or creative, critical and computational thinking. Learning to listen and tell or multisensory communication. Learning to collaborate or accepting diversity and empathetic collaboration. Learning to earn and give or financial literacy and impact-based philanthropy. And learning to be or deep self-awareness for long-term well-being and joyful living. Then in May 2010, I got a chance to visit small rural schools in Champavat region in Uttarakhand in the Himalayas. In an impromptu encounter with some students, I gave them my flip video camera and smartphone and got them to make very short video clips. They were fascinated. And this got me thinking about crafting learning experiences to deliver 21st century life skills in ways that captivate different types of learners. I think learners today can be described as committed, distracted, or reluctant learners. Committed learners enjoy the way learning is typically delivered in formal education systems, but distracted learners find rich media, that is, television, internet, game consoles, smartphones, etc., vying for their attention, and find it difficult to learn in the conventional, didactic way. Reluctant learners are also those who prefer a very different approach, like project-based, hands-on learning. The challenge is best defined by plotting the six timeless life skills on the x-axis and innovative ways of imparting these skills on the y-axis. As an example, we created a comic to explain the dispositions of a self-directed learner knitting a modern-day story around Eklavya. The idea was that the form factor of a comic would appeal more to today's learners. New age educators not only need to create enticing learning experiences, the learn design they architect should also include social and participative learning what I mentioned earlier as moving away from iLearn to vLearn solutions. Traditionally, the elements of formal education comprised of student, teacher, classroom, curriculum, 
assessment and qualification. The big shift in education today is metamorphosing all these elements and a new learning ecosystem is emerging where students are now lifelong learners who need to be proficient in self-directed informal learning. A teacher is any knowledgeable other, be it an educator, parent or an expert in a field and any authentic learning content that is made available by this knowledgeable other. Moreover, the relationship between a teacher and a student has become that of co-explorers instead of the teacher being a sage on stage and students being passive recipients. Classroom today is any learning space that facilitates social and participative learning. It could be a school or college, your home, your office or any virtual space like social media or online learning communities where you are always connected with fellow learners. There is a Sanskrit shloka which says we learn best when we learn one-fourth from the teacher, one-fourth from fellow students, one-fourth from own intelligence and one-fourth only with time. This beautifully captures what a good learning space should facilitate. Curriculum includes a specialization in a domain or discipline and 21st century life skills. Employers today value learning portfolios and performances of understanding like projects, internship and apprenticeship as much as formal qualifications. Knowledge may be acquired formally or informally, what is being called DIY learning or hackademics. What matters more than a degree or certificate is demonstration of deep understanding of knowledge in a domain. Gaining proficiency in timeless life skills has become imperative because we are in the midst of a phase change. To explain this phase change, let me share with you a short video I had made earlier. To augment our muscle power, we humans invented tools, domesticated animals, discovered steam, electricity and other forms of energy. These discoveries led to mechanization and automation and changed the complexion of the economy. Each phase change metamorphosed the skills needed for employability. For example, first ATMs replaced bank tellers and now internet banking is replacing physical bank branches. Robots have displaced humans on the assembly line and vending machines are replacing small shops. In the 20th century, to be gainfully employed, a person needed mastery in a particular domain. A university degree or a professional qualification usually guaranteed lifelong employability. In the 21st century, we are now in the midst of another phase change. Computers are augmenting human cognition. This is changing the complexion of the economy yet again. The future is VUCA. Volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. Stockpiling knowledge in the form of a university degree no longer guarantees lifelong employability. You still need deep understanding of a domain, but when information is abundant and growing, the scenario of getting education for fitting into pre-existing jobs is fast disappearing. Middle skill jobs that can be reduced to an algorithm will be outsourced to intelligent machines just like jobs that could be mechanized and automated were. Only low skilled low wage jobs or high skilled high wage jobs will remain. For the latter, besides mastery of a domain, you will need proficiency in 21st century life skills like learning to learn, learning to think and learning to be. Be it employment or entrepreneurship, to be 21st century ready, you need to learn to think different to innovate. When the rate of change is high, what matters most is how fast can you learn and reinvent yourself. Hence, four key questions imperative in the new learning ecosystem are What is worth learning? How will you learn it? How will you know you have learnt it well? And how will you become better at learning new things? Last year, Professor Panth and I co-conducted an online course for 100 odd learners on how to become a uber smart, self-directed, autonomous learner where we discuss these questions in detail. For the learn design, we adopted the analogy of an email college because we did not want to preclude learners who had limited internet connectivity and could not access rich media like videos. Over a period of six weeks, we sent three emails every week and supplemented this with conversations on an online discussion forum. Our email college is an example of space and time shift in the big shift in education. Our classroom was a virtual space and learning was happening in an asynchronous mode. This format supported any place, any pace and any time learning. In the post phase change scenario, what is especially worrisome are the young learners in rural and remote areas or at risk learners who anyway lack access to decent education and are getting no exposure to life skills essential for thriving in the emerging economic scenario. Some good news on this front is that the device shift in education gives an opportunity to provide relevant and meaningful learning even to these students. For the last three years, I've been visiting schools in rural Uttarakhand and Kutch area in Gujarat twice a year to conduct face-to-face -face workshops to impart timeless life skills. One of the schools I regularly visit is in village Madam 
50 kilometers from Almora in the Himalayas. In 2001, two passionate local young teachers converted three shops into an excellent learning space and named it Jeevanshala, where around 55 primary class students attend school every year. In this school, I have experimented with project-based learning and field trips. Some well-wishers gifted eight Android tablets to Jeevanshala and we used these to create stop-motion animation on local environment and made a short film about the local forest. Another time we made a field trip to the nearby town Almora and the students created a newspaper about this trip. These are examples of space shift and how forests and field trip can also become excellent learning spaces. At Arohi Balsansar, a school in village Satoli, 30 kilometers from Almora, we did a project on Mahatma Gandhi. Instead of focusing on learning facts about his life, I encouraged the students to formulate probing questions around things that they were curious to find out. With some hand-holding, they came up with great questions like, if Gandhiji were alive today, would corruption in India be less? Or, if Gandhiji were alive today, would relations between India and Pakistan be different? Students referred books in the library, asked their teachers, and since the school has got internet access, some students also went online to look for answers to their questions. But, because their questions were not straightforward, information-oriented questions, they had to figure out creative ways to answer them. Like, they looked at Mahatma Gandhi's principles of civil disobedience, non-cooperation, ahimsa, etc. and tried to extrapolate from this if these would have any impact on public policy today and hence make a difference on corruption. We had lively discussions and debates and finally, the students created a newspaper using the articles they had written. Students in government schools in Champavat, also in the Himalayas, learned how to make stop-motion animation using their teacher's smartphone and I explained to them that they could use animation to create fun performances of understanding on their topic of study, like create an animation to explain photosynthesis or Newton's laws of motion. Creating animation is far more interesting way of assessment than rote and regurgitate examination. I have also conducted workshop for teachers. This July, I got teachers in the hills to construct bridges using craft sticks and ponder on questions like how can they prove historical claims. The idea was to discuss how modes of thinking differ in different disciplines. A scientist can conduct experiments to validate a hypothesis, but a historian has to rely on the provenance of primary and secondary sources to validate a claim. Understanding and cultivating different modes of thinking, besides having knowledge of a discipline, develops our thinking skills. And this is essential for flourishing in the 21st century. Continuing on the theme of modes of thinking in different disciplines, students at the White Eagle School in Kutch learned how to think like a scientist by formulating a hypothesis about how Eno would react in hot, cold, salt and sweet water. They blasted CO2 rockets and found out that being a scientist can be great fun. I am also staying virtually connected with the students and teachers from these places on WhatsApp. For a group of 70 students and teachers from rural Gujarat and Uttarakhand, I am experimenting on how to design immersive, always connected learning experiences using WhatsApp. For example, I was doing a live, real-time coverage of my trip to Ireland on WhatsApp with this group microblogging about my trip, sharing photographs, and real-time location using Google Maps. This proved to be a very interesting way of delivering learning on subjects like geography and history. This experience catalyzed the creation of a learning game on WhatsApp called Where on Earth is Manan? Manan is my teenage son, who one day went on a walking tour of London, posting selfies from different locations like Trafalgar Square and Buckingham Palace on the WhatsApp group. While Manan was posting photos, I was giving clues on his location and supplementing with other questions like how can you know when the Queen is in residence at Buckingham Palace or when does the flag fly on half-mast. The learners were finding answers online and thus honing their ICT literacy and self-learning skills. With this WhatsApp group, I am currently running another informal learning course, Hindi translation of the famous Big History course created by Professor David Christian. If you do not know about this free online course, I encourage you to Google and find out more. In early 2015, Professor Pant and I co-conducted another course titled An Open Mind, which was about learning to think, and this course was conducted solely on WhatsApp. A cohort of 30 plus learners were very diverse. They included teachers from different parts of India, students from Delhi, Mumbai and Nainital, and a few professionals. We were sharing six bite-sized videos every week and complementing this with puzzles and fun learning activities. Using WhatsApp to conduct course is a great example of device shift in the big shift in education. 
To conclude, let me share with you some perspectives on future possibilities. I was recently in Vancouver where I got a chance to visit their latest attraction, Fly Over Canada. This is a virtual, immersive 4D experience where for 8 minutes you fly over famous spots in Canada, belted onto seats that move and shake, and you are sprayed with water when you fly over the ocean. It was an amazing experience. And it got me thinking that possibly virtual and augmented reality could be the future of crafting enticing learning experiences. With cost of creating and viewing virtual reality experiences falling and these becoming more prevalent, for example, YouTube already offers 3D videos and Second Life is making a comeback, augmented reality seems to be the next opportunity for creating hugely engaging learning experiences that appeal to all, committed, distracted and reluctant learners. Imagine going inside the human body to learn biology, visiting an atom to appreciate physics and then sharing your experiences on Instagram, debating issues on WhatsApp, tweeting and blogging with a cohort of global learners, all to deepen your understanding while thoroughly enjoying the learning experience. All this and more is very much possible. New age educators are the next renaissance man or woman. Make the most of this opportunity. Many thanks for listening.